We've received a lot of questions about audio levels and how to measure them, especially after our recent video about gain staging. So we wanted to delve into some of the key concepts and terminology in this field. My name is Thomas and I have been mastering records professionally for more than 20 years now. And on this channel we talk about audio mastering, so let's go! There are several ways to measure the level of an audio signal. The most basic and common method is to use a peak meter, which measures the peak level of the signal. A peak meter simply takes the absolute values of the samples and displays the largest value. There are also more advanced peak meters, known as true peak meters, or oversampled peak meters, which take into account the reconstructed signal that occurs between sample points. These meters provide a more accurate representation of the actual audio signal and may show intersample peaks, which are louder than the sample values. Another type of level meter is the RMS meter. This meter measures the average power of an audio signal. And there are two ways to measure RMS level. The mathematically correct way, where the RMS of a sine wave is 3 dBs below the peak level, and the standard audio way, where these two levels are the same. And this convention, which has been used in audio engineering for a long time, makes it easier to calibrate levels in a control room by allowing all meters to show the same level for a 1 kHz test tone, regardless of whether they are peak meters, RMS meters, VU meters or LUFS meters or other types of meters. And while RMS meters are somewhat useful because they show a value that is more closely related to the perceived loudness of the signal than peak levels are, they are not widely used as uh, other types of meters are better at this. A LUFS meter is a type of level meter that measures the perceived loudness of an audio signal. And it does this by filtering the signal to mimic the frequency response of the human ear and then measuring the resulting signal using a kind of RMS meter. And this allows the LUFS meter to take into account the fact that the human ear is, for example, less sensitive to lower frequencies and to provide a measurement that correlates more closely to the perceived loudness of the material. A standard LUFS meter will display three different measurements. Momentary loudness, this reflects the loudness of the signal at a specific moment in time and is calculated by averaging the loudness of the signal over a period of 400 milliseconds. This is quite similar to a normal RMS or VU meter, but generally more useful. Then there is the short-term loudness, and this reflects the loudness of the signal over a slightly longer period of 3 seconds, and can be useful for identifying trends in loudness or for comparing the relative loudness of different audio signals. And then we have integrated loudness, and this reflects the overall loudness of the signal over an extended period of time, and it's usually used to calculate the overall loudness of a whole song in a mastering context. And in addition to these three main measurements, a standard LUFS meter may also display additional information, such as the loudness range of the audio signal and the true peak level of the signal. LUFS meters are widely used in mastering to quickly determine the loudness of a master. And they are not perfect, but they are a very useful tool, I would say. The VU meter is another type of level meter that is often found in mastering studios. It used to be a very popular way to measure the loudness of an audio signal, and it works similarly to an RMS meter by averaging the measured signal over a period of time. And in the analog world, there is also a specification for the electrical level corresponding to zero VU. But in many cases, this is very arbitrary. And one way to calibrate a VU meter for mastering is to set zero VU to the average level of the material being mastered. For example, if I am mastering a record that averages at, uh, say, minus 10 LUFs, then I will set the VU meter to show zero VU at minus 10 dBFS. But there is no standard for calibrating VU meters, so you can set it however you prefer. And when it comes to measuring loudness, the LUFS meter is much better than the VU meter. But a VU meter can also provide some basic information about dynamics, resonances and tonal balance within the material. Although this can be better determined by simply listening. 
I mainly use the VU meter as a tool to confirm what I'm hearing, and I will usually only notice it when it behaves in a way that doesn't match the sound. And in those cases I will know that there is something that I need to look closer at. So hopefully this video has been useful for getting to know some of the meters that are often used in mastering. There are other meters that are being used as well, but these are the sort of the standard meters for measuring audio level. And I hope that you got something out of this video. If you did, please hit the like button. And also let us know if you want us to continue on this subject and make more videos about the fundamentals of analog and digital audio. There are lots of things to discuss when it comes to the more technical side of mastering, like more kinds of meters, sample rates, bit depth, aliasing, noise, clipping, operating levels, interfacing analog and digital and so on. So let us know if any of this would be interesting to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.